Since the beginning of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the number of American troops in Poland has increased to about 10,000, including F-15 fighter pilots, Patriot anti-aircraft system personnel, and soldiers from the Airborne Division. The establishment of the first permanent garrison in Poznan will serve as infrastructural support for the Americans, and this in turn will have a positive impact on Poland's defense capabilities. When Russia invaded Ukraine, when Russia is trying to rebuild its empire, it is very important that the Western world is united, that the Western world feels safe, and it feels safe when our armed forces work together. We can be satisfied that Polish-American cooperation is going so well, which is important for the security of our country, but also for the security of the entire eastern flank of the North Atlantic Alliance. The garrison is being established thanks to U.S. President Joe Biden's decision in 2022. In addition to supporting the contingent of Americans, the unit will also take care of directing and managing the U.S. military's forward outposts in Poland, where 13 military personnel and 140 civilians are stationed there. I wanted to emphasize it again, the continuous and ongoing support for the troops who are permanently stationed in Poland. This is not the only beneficiary of this situation, because it will also benefit 11 different locations in Poland, rotational forces that will also be supported. This garrison is such a second home for American soldiers. This moment is truly historical. Nothing is more important than ensuring our nation's security. To date, there have been seven U.S. garrisons in Europe, five in Germany, one in Italy and one in Belgium. The dice have been thrown. We have joined the Super League of Western Euro-Atlantic countries. Poland is a safe place to invest in security, a loyal ally, one that spends the proverbial 3 percent of GDP on defense, and one that will not let the Americans down, which is why the Americans named this garrison Camp Kościuszko. Defense ministry expenditures this year will amount to almost 97 billion złote, or 3 percent of GDP. Several tens of billions of złote from the Armed Forces Support Fund must also be added to this amount. It is likely that this year Polish defense spending will exceed 130 billion złote, even taking into account the announcements of other NATO members to increase spending on this purpose. This year Poland will probably be in first place in this respect. A strong army is a guarantee of security for our other smaller and weaker allies as well. At the moment when we talk, we can see it perfectly in many examples. Polish pilots protect the airspace of Slovakia, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. Let us remember that American investments, both in economic and military terms, are a very important element that increases the level of security. In the current situation, it is hard to imagine that Americans will leave our country. Even at the beginning of the war, Poland and the Baltic states pushed the argument for a strong stance to be taken by the European Union and NATO in supporting Ukraine. According to Professor Piotr Grochmalski, Warsaw's serious voice and the two visits of U.S. President Joe Biden are among the arguments that demonstrate Poland's growing position on the international stage. A result from the new strategic concept adopted in Madrid, which defines Russia as a new strategic threat to the alliance, it is clear that here Germany played the main role, which is now taken over by Poland. Hence, on the one hand, we are building an army that will be the strongest European army. Since the beginning of Russian aggression, Poland has transferred more than 2 billion euros worth of military equipment to Ukraine. Thus, Poland figures as Kiev's third partner both in terms of transfer to military support and overall. On the other hand, in terms of logistics, Polish airports and seaports, border crossings and railroads are a key link in the supply chain to Ukraine.